Great. So our uh, next topic is uh, polarization. Polarization means what? To polarize, to create poles. What is a pole? South pole, North pole. Okay. Uh, pole and a pillar. Pillar and so. Uh, what do you mean by polarizing light? Light ni polarize shares na rendah dan ada bentar ni. We are controlling the light to travel or to oscillate in a particular direction. So pole, pillar, ane di it symbolizes a direction. And polarization of light means the oscillations of light waves are restricted to a particular direction. So, what are the waves? So, light in wave form is is the uh, primary rule. Light is electromagnetic radiation. Light is electromagnetic radiation. So it contains uh, electric field and magnetic field oscillating perpendicular to each other. Right? So in the key put electric field chosundi, magnetic field electronic chosundi, oscillating electric field electronic chosundi. All these things we need to see to understand the nature of light. Okay, uh, so what is the primary source of electric field? Electric field and electric field. Electric field. Ions. Higher energy to lower energy. Higher energy to lower energy. Electric field. When you have charges, the attractive or repulsive force field of the charge is represented by the field. Field is the region around the charge in which its influence exists. A charge at influence e region lo ite onto the dhani field at the field at the end of the region on the front of column yeh man thar field field work at the end of the In some region you are going to work. It's a physical place. So it could end field of a charge and it is a region where its influence exists. Influence and a charge at influence just either it will attract or repel. So these are the possibilities. So electric field and it is a region where the attractive or repulsive forces of charge exist. So, the number is the number of 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 the number electric field and it is uniform now constant value at a particular point 
right? And uh, when you go away from the charge, the uh, field or influence reduces. But at a particular point, the value remains constant, right? So now I want oscillating electric field. Electric field and the oscillator is there. Because it increases or because it decreases, man. At the end. How to generate that? Oscillating electric field. If the charge is moving to and fro, if the charge oscillates. What happens? I'm sitting here and measuring the force. So if the charge comes closer to me, I'll express more force. If it goes away, I'll experience less force. So, if the charge oscillates, the force experienced at a particular point will have ups and downs. So, if I draw a graph for the electric field, I'll get a high value, low value, high value, low value. Some oscillations will occur as a function of time. So the electric field is a graph between the force experienced by the test charge as a function of time. So here I'm keeping a test charge. This is a test charge. I'm keeping a test charge at a particular location, and I'm oscillating the actual charge. So what happens? I'll experience an oscillating electric field, or I'm generating an oscillating electric field. So, oscillating electric field generates a damping charge. Let me oscillate the charge. Let me move it to and fro. Move just the amount of energy. Oscillating electric field energy generated. That's okay. Now, I want to generate uh, oscillating magnetic. Field. As my energy mix channel turns out suddenly, so my second stage of operation is to generate oscillating magnetic. So first of all, how to generate magnetic field? Magnetic field let me generate here. Magnetic field. Moving charge produces magnetic field. Right, a wire coil laga chutte se battery connect ches the. Simple battery, DC current produces magnetic field. When the charge moves, so moving charge produces magnetic field. But it is a constant magnetic field. So that was my idea. Magnetic field in a direction will generate a magnetic field. What is the direction of magnetic field? Let us use Ampere's right hand thumb rule. What is that? If the curl of fingers... What? Ampere's right hand thumb rule. If your thumb represents the direction of the charge movement, the curl of fingers represents the direction of magnetic field. So, if you take a wire and if charges are moving along a particular direction, your curl of fingers represent the direction of magnetic field. Is that Ampere's right hand thumb?
thumb represents current curl of fingers magnetic right so moving charge produces magnetic field that to constant magnetic field so what do i need now to generate oscillating magnetic field so uh, this is in circular motion the field is in uh, circular direction generated field in circular direction i want a particular direction for the magnetic field how to generate that so uh, if i use uh, if the charge moves in a circle if the charge moves in a circle in anti clockwise direction i can generate north pole and if the charge moves in clockwise direction i can generate south pole so how is that let's say okay so take a spiral spring kind of uh, wire and apply electric field to it i mean apply current to it direct current what happens uh, so what is the direction of magnetic field now so if the current moves in a anti clockwise direction if the current moves in anti clockwise direction what is the direction of magnetic field outwards outward from where outwards from inside the loop the field will be outwards acting outwards from inside the loop. जो इनसाइड इन चीज़ उसने आपको मिल गई वर्किंग आउटपुट्स, वैराज़ इफ़ द करंट मूव्स इन क्लॉकवाइज़ डायरेक्शन, द फील्ड विल बी ऑलवेज एंटरिंग इनटू द लूप, सो इफ़ द करंट मूव्स इन एंटी क्लॉकवाइज़ डायरेक्शन the field always will be expelling out of the loop if the current moves in clockwise direction field will be always entering into the loop okay so if i represent the field as a arrow mark if i represent the field as an arrow mark what happens arrow head represents north pole and arrow tail represents south pole so whenever i represent a field here so here uh, i'll be facing the north pole so at every point within the loop the magnetic field will be pointing out of the loop so i call it as a north pole and here the magnetic field will be pointing into the loop when the current is in clockwise direction when the current is in clockwise direction the field will be pointing into the loop i call it as south pole okay so arrow head is north pole it is represented by dot arrow tail is south pole it is represented by a cross mark okay so if the charge moves in a circle i can generate a magnetic field traveling in a particular direction in straight lines so if the charge moves in circles magnetic field will be perpendicular to the circle in a straight line so B is perpendicular to electric field. 
the generated magnetic field is perpendicular to charge moments. So what do I need now? I need oscillating magnetic field. So if the charge just moves with constant velocity, I will get constant magnetic field. What do I need now? Oscillating magnetic field. So I have to oscillate the charge to generate oscillating magnetic field. So what happens? So if I oscillate the charge, I'll I'll be generating oscillating electric field. At the same time, the magnetic field will be perpendicular to electric field. It is also oscillating. oscillations are electric field oscillations <coughs> perpendicular to the plane oscillations are magnetic field oscillations so both are self regenerating so it is self regenerating electric and magnetic fields is electromagnetic So now comes the question, uh, the Bohr's third postulate. So when an electron jumps from higher energy level to lower energy level, the difference of the energy is released as electromagnetic radiation. So this is an electron jumping from higher energy level to lower level. So how exactly is it jumping now? So during the journey, it is oscillating. So only in that case, we will get radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is Only when the charge is oscillating. So, if the gap is very high, I will get high frequency radiation. If the gap is very low, I will get low frequency radiation. If the gap is very high, electron oscillations are very quick. It oscillates very quickly. The oscillations are very quick. Whereas if the gap is very low, the oscillations are very slow. So when you are jumping out of a plane, you will have more vibrations, you'll have more oscillations. If you are jumping from a wall, you know less oscillations. As simple as that. So if the electron jumps from the lower height, lower energy level, you get low frequency radiation. If the electron jumps from higher energy levels, you get high frequency radiation. Simple. Right? So this is about uh, electromagnetic radiation. So now what are the possibilities? Uh, so, electric field and magnetic field will be oscillating perpendicular to the direction of motion always. And for all purposes, we consider only the oscillations of electric field. When you are considering light as a wave, wave theory of light, for all uh, interference, diffraction, polarization topics, we will be considering light as a wave. So, wave is spread up to always we consider only electric field oscillations. So when you are showing a wave, 
we call it as a light wave, it is electric field oscillations. So inherently there will be some magnetic field oscillating perpendicular to it, we are not showing it. Right? So now, uh, so what are the possible directions of electric field oscillations? So it must be perpendicular to direction of motion. So the electric field can oscillate in any direction. So it can oscillate up and down in this direction, perpendicular to the plane, tilted. So all 360 degrees are possible for electric field oscillations. So the electric field can take any possibility out of all these 360 degrees. So, if I want to show it as a vector, I represent it like this. So, this is the electric field oscillations. So, those electric field oscillations can take any direction in all the 360 degrees possibilities. Electric field can be in any orientation. So, this is unpolarized light. And if I restrict that electric field oscillations into a particular direction and if I chop down all these things and if I restrict the oscillations to one particular direction, it is polarized. So ordinary light will have oscillations in all directions, 360 degrees. Oscillations of what? Electric field oscillations. Ordinary light will have electric field oscillations in all these degrees. If I restrict to a particular direction, it is called polarization. Okay. So this polarized light can be represented. So, in which direction is it polarized now? A direction on the net It can be in vertical direction, it can be in perpendicular to the plane, or in any slant tilted direction. So, there will be infinite possibilities. So, the net represents here. So, I will resolve into two components. One, on the plane, another perpendicular to the plane. So, I consider only these two possibilities and any other possibility is a combination of these two. Right? So, if I have a vector uh, something like this tilted, it is a combination of vertical and horizontal oscillations. So, then only I will get a component, uh, a simple uh, vector operation, vector sum. One is perpendicular, another is uh, horizontal like this, the resultant will be in between those two. So, I consider only these two possibilities. And any other possibility is a combination of those two. Right? So, these are the primary polarized light. One, Oscillations on the plane, another oscillation perpendicular to the plane. Then what are the combinations? So these two are plane polarized. If I pull both of them at a time, so I am taking a point here, if I pull both of them at a time, I mean, I am considering one combination where both the oscillations occur at the same time. So, uh, like this, downwards, left and right, up and down, both are oscillating at the same time, then I will get circularly polarized line.
say both pull the object at the same time, then I will get circularly polarized. I will get a resonance figure for children. So if both oscillations occur at the same time with zero phase difference, I will get linearly polarized light. That is a 90 degrees phase difference. So uh, one is starting at zero, another starting at uh, one. So by the time this reaches one, this will reach zero. So I'll get circularly polarized light. And both oscillations are perpendicular to each other. Other possibilities. So in circularly polarized light, I'll get two possibilities. Right circularly polarized and left circularly polarized. possibilities for circularly polarized light, left circularly polarized and right circularly polarized. And if the strengths are different, I will get the elliptically polarized light. So if the pull on x direction is uh, lower and if the pull on y direction is higher, circle becomes ellipse. also you will have uh, two different polarizations one is uh, right elliptically polarized another is left elliptically polarized When light passes through optically active crystals, perpendicular to optic axis. So the light waves oscillations along the optic axis only survive. So you get polarized light. So this is optic axis of the crystal. So the electric field oscillations along the optic axis only survive. So, example for this is nickel. Nickel prism. So, when light passes through the optically active crystals, oscillations along the the optic axis on the sun. That is one possibility. Another possibility is polarization by reflection. This is by transmission, polarization by transmission, 
this is polarization by reflection so the law that controls here is a malus law that we will see in the later sessions the law controls here is a brewster's law okay uh, so here uh, one component uh, transmits will be polarized here we will have mix mixed polarization So on polarized light falling on the material, a portion will be transmitted, a portion will be reflected. So if the angle of incidence is fixed to a particular value at that location, at that angle, the entire reflected light, one component will be completely reflected. The polarized light will have two components, one oscillations on the plane, one oscillation is perpendicular to the plane. So that dotted polarization, the dot polarized wave will be completely reflected. So the dot polarized wave is completely reflected. So that is one case. So transmitted wave is purely polarized. The dark polarized wave is completely reflected, then what happens? The transmitted wave is purely polarized. Third possibility, double refraction. There are certain crystals which undergo double, refract, double refraction. So a component will be horizontally polarized and a component will be vertically polarized. When unpolarized light falls on those crystals, double refraction produces horizontal components and vertical components separately. So these are the three general possibilities of generating polarized light. One by transmission, another by reflection, third by double refraction. So the details of this we will see in the next session.